Before we do anything else, I'd like to um, set some ground rules for ourselves and some, some goals. That's why we're here. We don't want our divorce to upset him. Well, it's already upsetting him, isn't it? He's confused, yeah. And when he's confused, he, he gets upset. Paul correctly brings up the subject of setting ground rules in the first session, but then neglects to actually set any. He then fails to protect Oliver by inviting him back into the office, thereby exposing him to his parents' freewheeling and often traumatizing banter. Oliver, why don't you come in and join us? Oliver, I was, I was wondering if there was anything that you wanted to say now that we're all together. Well, I know I'm supposed to stay at my dad's, but it's hard when his friends come over on school nights. Well, up till now, I, I thought you liked hanging out with us. I do like it. It's fun, but it's hard for me to go to sleep and finish all my homework. All right, I got it. So from now on, just you and me on school nights. Good? Yeah. So, Oliver, is there anything else that you'd like to say to your dad? Can you go shopping for food so I have something to eat after school? Sweetie, how about this? How about we make up a list together, a shopping list you can give to your dad, and then you two can go shopping together? I, I guess so. Okay. All right. All right, so um, anything else you'd like to clear up? I don't know. Look, kiddo, it's important to both your mom and me that you feel okay about this. That way we can all start moving on with our lives. We'll never, we'll never force you to do anything you're not ready for, okay? I don't want to stay at my dad's house. Oliver, come I want to stay at my real house. Uh, Oliver, even, even though your dad has agreed to make some changes. Are you saying that you would still be uncomfortable staying at his apartment? I don't want to talk about this anymore. She rearranges both our lives just for this, then throws it all out just the minute he pitches a fit. Shit. Oliver, you, you're coming, aren't you? You don't have to do anything you don't want to do, okay? Oh, that's great. That's really going to help him grow up. Thanks, Bess. I, I want to apologize for Luke. But then I, I always want to apologize for Luke. I should probably stop doing that, right? Maybe we should apologize to Oliver, too. Sometimes adults forget the rules. Rules? What rules, Paul? You forgot to set any. Actually, it's only in the sixth session that Paul becomes as forceful in looking out for Oliver's interests as he should have been all along. Even then, he is not forceful enough. What? Don't you want to give Paul your big news? You're the one who's so worked up about it. Why don't you tell him? 11 o'clock last night, Bess calls me up and tells me she's moving upstate. I got a job offer. Two weeks from now, she's going to pack up my son and take him away. It doesn't have to be like that. I'm not trying to kidnap she him. She just dumps this on me. No chance to talk about I it. I tried to talk to him about it, and, and, and he hung up on me. And then when I tried to call him back, he wouldn't pick up the phone. Okay. Bess, why don't you, why don't you tell me about the job offer? While Michelle and I were on vacation, we visited a friend of mine who's a professor at Bard College. Turns out one of their adjuncts in the art history department is going on emergency medical leave and they need someone to fill in, starting in two weeks. See, she's known about this for almost a month now, but she didn't tell me till she already made all the arrangements. I didn't want to say anything until I knew for sure. I figured, what's the point in, in having a fight if there's nothing to fight about? As I'm sure you might understand how, how Luke might feel a little confused about this. You, you didn't tell him that you are seriously considering leaving the city and the fact that it's going to impact upon his life, but especially on Oliver's. 
Did you already tell Oliver about this? That's what I want to know. No, of course I didn't tell him. I wanted to discuss it with you first. That's why I called you. And if you want the truth, I was afraid to tell you about it till now because I knew you would get upset and then I would probably back down and give up and I wasn't going to risk that. Can I ask you why this job is so important to you? You don't, you don't get a chance like this every day. You know, and, and in the fall they're going to take on another graduate fellow and, and if I do well, that means I can finally finish my degree. So you might stay up there? Is it necessary for you to move upstate? I'm taking your advice. You told me that I, I've been using Oliver as a way to hide. That, that he's my excuse for never finishing anything. Have you considered the effect that leaving the city will have on Oliver? I mean, he's been through a tremendous upheaval. Oh, no, wait. Hold on a second. This is, this is a huge double standard. If Luke was offered a job out of town, would you be telling him that, no, he's got to give it up? A reality check is in order. A fill-in adjunct professorship is a crap job that would be looked upon as a great opportunity only by someone in desperate straits. If the terms of their pending divorce have left her that way, then that should be brought out into the open so that terms could be negotiated that would solve this problem without requiring that Oliver suffer further upheavals. But Paul lets the claim of being a great opportunity stand, leaving the traumatizing changes Oliver will have to endure the only thing to discuss with Oliver. Not surprisingly, the discussion ends badly. I know this is a lot to ask. I know we've asked a lot already. But this is the way it has to be right now. You don't care what I think. Baby, of course we care what you think. And I know this has been really, really hard on you. But this is the best possible solution. I don't want to leave. Oliver, this is another lot for you to take in. But I think it's important that you tell us what you need. I don't want to go! Tell them they can't do this! I knew this was an awful idea. I, if you would just move back to Brooklyn, then he could go to his real school and stay in his real house. Oh, you want me to move back into our old apartment? What the hell are you trying to do to me? I hate staying with Dad! I won't stay with Dad! Baby, I know you guys don't always get along, but you certainly don't hate each he other. He yells at me. He gets drunk. I don't want to stay with him. You get drunk while he's staying with you? That's why he can't live with me. It's all a fucking train wreck. So what then? Then I just have to give up everything that's important to me because you can't be a fucking responsible father for two Stop seconds? Stop it! Enough! That's it. No more fighting. You gotta take care of this kid. Of course. Oliver, you know that we love you very, very much. And hey, don't worry, kiddo. This doesn't have anything to do with you. Fuck you! Fuck you! Oliver! 